that there is only one purpose which we are here, which we are here here to for tonight, Lord, was to worship and to glorify that name of Jesus, to worship you, to praise that mighty name of Jesus tonight, Lord, Lord, as we come to hear the message from that man whom you have appointed to bring that good news tonight, Lord, Lord, we wait, we listen, in silence, we say thank you tonight, Lord, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that, that as we have been away from this morning, Lord, Lord, we know we know that there were many of those who could not be away this morning because they have died tonight. Lord, Lord. Father God, we thank you up to this present time of the evening that we could come into this place and give you praise because we know that you are God and there is no one else beside you to accept our praises tonight in the name of Jesus. We say thank you, Lord, Lord, for what you have done and what you will be doing. And as we live our life to please you tonight, Lord, Lord, we know that we all look to you tonight as our praises go, go up, the blessings come down. Lord, Lord, as I try to live our life to please you, O Lord, I am a sinner, but as I come to you, Lord, Lord, you know my heart. Lord, as I hope my heart to watch you, Lord, Lord, you know all about me. And so far, Lord, I just thank you for giving me that salvation, which is free of course, there is no charge, there is no cause attached to it. And Father God, I just thank you tonight, Lord God, as we, as we sing praises unto you tonight, Lord God, we say thank you. As we wake up on that word that will be forthcoming, and those who are the way, Lord God, we ask that you bring them into your house in safety, Lord God. We ask you about to surround the homes of those who are away. Those who that are here present and when we go back to our homes, Lord God, that you will give us protection. Lord, those who are not well before us, we ask you about to heal them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet and in their inner system, Father God, you know what is wrong. But we know that many of us suffer different conditions of health, but Lord, we know that you are the healer. What you have done for those in the past, Father God, you will do for us today. In the name of Jesus. And so, Lord God, just thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for what you have done. Lord, you know my heart's desire. Lord, you know every one of us has desire tonight, Lord God. You know there are different circumstances that are before us. But Lord, we look to you because we know that you are a prayer answering God. And we know that whatever we ask for God, you will never say no. There are three words, Lord God, which is yes, no, and wait. And Lord, we wait upon you with patience. We know in your time, Father God, you will answer our prayers. And so, Father God, I just thank you. That you know. You know, Lord God, you know. Every one of us has different, different conditions. Lord, you know. You know that those who are very very tonight. Father God, we put country before you. Lord, you know there are so many wrongs going on in this country today, Lord God. So many wrongs. Lord, we look at those who are on top. Those who are governing. Lord, we ask you about to, to, to convict them on their hearts that they will do what is right in this country, Father God. There is so much of wrong things, Lord God, but we know that you put up and you take down. And in your time, Father God, we know that you will make a change. Lord, because change all comes from you tonight, Lord God. And that you are holy. And you are God of holiness tonight, Father God, as always. We say thank you, Lord God, as we sing to you tonight, Lord God, as we wake up on that word, that word, Lord, that word, warfare. Tonight is warfare night, Lord God. We come to battle tonight, Lord God. We know that there is nothing that you cannot do. And now we just stand and wait as we come to fight that word, Lord God. Father God, we just give you praise and thanks. And whatever you will do, we say thank you, Lord. And those who you have done good for, we know that they will testify of your goodness. Lord, remember your sister Joan tonight, Lord God. Lord, remember your sister Chona, Father God. And all those who are not well, Father God, but are right hand. Lord, we pray that you will give them the comfort of their hearts in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you that you are God of power. We say thank you for, for what you will do for us and for these people. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be with you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. The Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and he see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, that you shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever you shall hear, that you shall speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. And thank God for the Holy Spirit that teaches us, that guides us. Sometimes we don't know what we should pray for or how we should pray. But the Spirit itself will teach us how to pray, even um, guide us and guide us into all truth. And this time I'd like to call on one person just to share with us testimony this evening. I'd like to call Sister Sherry in the sky and give God a of praise. Let us talk about it.
wonderful job this evening. Really felt so much in the presence of the Lord. And indeed we are. If you are gathered in this day, Amen. the Lord is in the midst. Amen. Among all those that are on the line, uh, we shout now to a couple persons. Uh, firstly, we want to uh, welcome to the live Diane Pa'al. Uh, that's uh, Iva's uh, sister, younger sister uh, from Dutch Road. So we're glad you and your family are locked in. Also, Carol Thomas is with us, and uh, Wendy, Wendy Bala. Everyone is welcome in the name of Jesus. We send your prayer request right away because in half an hour time, uh, we will be praying for you. All right, somebody's at the phone, and so that comment section there, uh, send in your prayer request, send it in faith, and see what God is going to do. And also, tomorrow is a special time for the men and the young men of the church because we are having a uh, fellowship, a uh, men's fellowship. Uh, and so it's going to be an exciting, wonderful time. And by the friend, come over. So it's all the men, the young uh, men as well. Taking our Bibles uh, to Corinthians again. We are still in that passage of scripture. First Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through verses 27. Uh, for the continuation on uh, the series, Keeping Your Eyes Upon the Prize. Keeping Your Eyes Upon the Prize. Would you read uh, with me God's word? Verse 24, knowing not that they which run in the race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you might obtain. Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. And therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means that I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Father, we thank you for the word of God and for all those heirs that are tuned in tonight. Even as we're preparing for warfare, we've had a tremendous time of worship with the word now. Our warfare is in the next half an hour, dear Father. Uh, we know that victories are going to be won tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, man, and your seeds. Amen. Well, the Apostle Paul speaks of all the race. And so once upon a time, there was a race between a cheetah and a lion. And so who wins that race between the cheetah and the lion? It was the cheetah, of course. And the lion, he was a bad loser. He said uh, to the cheetah, you are a cheetah. <laughs> and the cheetah replies, nah, you are a lion. <laughs> oh, praise God. The race that we are running in and Paul is talking about um, is one of perseverance. Among so many other things that I've shared with you before. Perseverance. You've got to persevere if you want to win. You've got to persevere if you want to receive uh, the prize. And the Bible tells us about a man who truly persevered. His name was Joshua. The mantle was handed down to him by the great man Moses, the great prophet, the great deliverer. And so Joshua embraced uh, that calling that was placed upon his life to conquer the land, to lead the armies of Israel into the promised land. Now, Joshua fought for a long time. It wasn't a one day battle. It wasn't a one month battle or even a year battle. But it was a seven year battle. It was a long drawn out battle. Sometimes our battles are pretty short. But then sometimes they are drawn out. And in order for us to keep on fighting the long drawn out battles in our lives, we must persevere. Amen. That, brothers and sisters, is something that you've got to make up your mind in those battles that you might be facing tonight. Uh, you probably have been in it for quite a while now. And so if you want to have the victory at the end, you can't stop. Amen. You can't stop fighting. You can't lay down your arms, my friend. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whether it takes a year, whether it takes two years, three years, four years, seven years, like the battle that Joshua faced, um, 
one must persevere, amen, in order to win. Joshua was not a quitter. And as you can see that uh, the legacy that he left back behind, he was able to say to Israel just about uh, when he was, he was going to pass on into the grave of 110 years. Uh, and he told Israel, he said, listen, you have seen me from the very beginning, the very onset. Uh, I was with Moses. I stayed faithful to the man of God. Uh, Amen. And then when uh, the call of God was handed down to me by Moses, the servant of the Lord, I embraced that. I never quit. And it had been a long battle, battle after battle. Now I am an old man. Glory to God. But he said to them, Hallelujah. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So you've got to cling on to God um, in this battle that we are facing in. You've got to learn an endurance. In fact, an unfaltering endurance. Uh, the spiritual battle here on earth, sometimes it's long and it's tiring. Um, some of you have been soldiers of the cross uh, for many years now, amen. And you have been in many, many spiritual battles uh, in your lifetime, glory to God, amen. And you have learned something, amen, that uh, quitters are not going to ever, ever win, amen. And because you know who you are, it's important that you know who you are, children of God, that we are winners from the day that we got saved, amen. Deposited in our spirit is the ability to win and to conquer because we have a conquering Savior, amen, who conquered the grave and who conquered death and who conquered the devil, amen, who conquered the enemy and conquered sin. We have that seed, we have, amen, the spiritual life of God in us. And so with that, we know we just can't lose at all. So we will persevere in the fight, glory to God. We are coming inside, so not going to lay down all weapons. Until Jesus comes, we'll be here every Wednesday night. Amen. And we are raging war against the enemy, raging war against this world, raging war against the flesh. Glory to God. Because we do have common signs in the streets. The battle is not with flesh and blood. It's not with our neighbor. It is not with our co-workers. It is not with family members. It's not with your spouses. It's not with your children. Our battle is against spiritual wickedness, Paul says, and happiness. Therefore, take the whole armor of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Use the sword of the Spirit, glory to God, and the shield of faith. Put on the heaven of salvation. The breastplate of faith, glory to God. Gird yourself with the, with, with the belt of truth, amen, glory to God. Because we are soldiers of the cross. Could I hear you in the middle of the Lord? A good round of applause. Glory to God. I want you to think about something for a moment. When the animals were summoned into Noah's ark, I want to believe the cheetahs. I told you the story in the beginning about the cheetahs. They must have been first, that pair, male and female, to enter into the ark because, uh, as you all know, the fastest of all animals upon the planet Earth yeah. are the cheetahs. They are incredibly fast. In fact, they can reach speeds up to 17 miles per hour. Wow! That is incredible, but that's the truth, my friends. They can reach those kinds of, of speeds. But at the same time, uh, some among the slowest, uh, you might find the snails. They are pretty slow, and they, my brothers and sisters, uh, yes, sir. Uh, but you have to give credit to those snails, amen, because uh, if they didn't make it into the ark, we will have no snails today, uh, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody said it should not make it into the ark, because we have no African snails in the problem. <laughs> my God, but then you will not be able to eat corn, so those of you who love you. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, thank God they made it in the ark. Now my friend, if that snails uh, had been looking at them cheetahs, 70 miles an hour, heading into the ark, uh, you know, they would have said, uh, you can imagine that wife snail saying to the husband snail, you know, we better give up. We will never make it into that ark. The speed that we are going in, we will never get into that ark. Why don't we give up? 
Well, I can hear the papa snail saying, sweetheart, listen, no matter we might be slow, but we ain't giving up glory to God because we heard the call of God to get into that high glory to God. And it is, uh, if it is inch by inch, we're going to get in. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Regardless of how long it takes, uh, we're going to get in uh, to that high glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. The thing about the snails, brothers and sisters, uh, they might be slow on um, but they know how to persevere, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't despise those that are slower, my friend. No, sir. Being slow does not mean to say that you are not going to win the prize. The prize is not uh, only for the swift, my friend. It is also for the slow, glory to God. God is not impressed on how fast that you can grow in the Christian life. God, don't, don't even think, my friend, about rushing growth. And some people just like to, to grow really fast. You know how when we were kids, you mean, I, I, I could wait to, to get 17. I, I rushed that time so much. And the only reason why I couldn't wait to get 17 because I wanted my license to drive. Amen. And I wanted a car to drive because I knew how to drive. We always had vehicles. My father used to buy and sell vehicles. And so I wanted to get on that road. I, I was dreaming, see myself in that car and heading down the road because I got my license because I was driving without license and I was scared that I'll meet up a police or a police will meet up on your license because I wish to did at one time, my friend. That's another story, amen. But God saved me. Glory to God. But my friend, I wanted to grow up real fast, amen. So I could get my license and get on that road. But my friend, I tell you, uh, as you go on in life, uh, you say to yourself, I wish, uh, now for those who are 70, I wish I was 17 again. You wish you could go back in time. You wish that life uh, was not passing so, so quickly and so fast. Uh, my friend, this Christian race, don't worry, amen, about trying to be the fastest uh, or trying to grow faster than everybody else. God is not impressed uh, about that, my friend. What God is impressed about um, is when you take your time to grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord. Uh, holiness uh, is not something living a holy life. Um, it's not something, my brothers and sisters, that happens in one day time. Um, you will find that slowly and slowly you begin to grow. Yes, until you become a great tree, glory to God. Uh, a strong tree. There are some trees that grow pretty fast. It's like, it's like mushrooms, for instance. Uh, mushrooms grow up overnight, don't they, my friends? Quickly, they grow up overnight. Uh, but mushrooms do not last at all. As soon as the heat comes down upon them, they melt, my friend. Uh, so fast growth uh, may not be necessarily the best growth or the best way to take time to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, take time to learn about the Christian life and uh, how to be like Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't worry about others uh, who might seem to be getting ahead uh, and who might be, be seeming to be way in the, in the front uh, above everybody else. Uh, don't let that be a discouragement to you because uh, you are so my friend. Uh, no, it's not about who gets there first uh, at the end, glory to God, but also remember it is who finished the race. Amen. Some are fast, uh, but my friend, they don't finish because why? And because they lack the stamina, they lack the endurance. This Christian race is not a, a hundred meter race or a fifty meter race. It's a marathon, my friend, twenty six point seven miles. Hallelujah, glory to God. And any marathon runner know you gotta have endurance to make it. Praise God, Amen. So God wants us to endure. He wants us to persevere. Glory to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 11, the great thesis of, of Solomon. He says, I've observed uh, uh, something else under the sun. The fastest runner does not always win the prize. He also says, the strongest warrior does not always win the battle. The wise sometimes grow hungry, and the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. Those who are educated 
don't always lead successful lives. King Solomon, as he looked wrong, he learned some lessons in life. And this is an important lesson that he learned. And you've got to learn that as well to praise God. It is something that you can take to the bank and you can cash it, my brother and sister, because it's a good check that you're getting tonight, praise God. It is those that keep their eyes on Jesus Christ will win, praise God, amen. And will finish up the race, glory to God. So we must persevere, Paul says, because there is a prize waiting for us at the end. And so we can persevere because God has given us the power, amen. God has given us the ability through the anointing of the Spirit of God to complete this race, my friend. You got all that is required, Peter tells us. Everything, amen, that is needful for us to be a successful believer in Christ has already been provided, praise God. So, brother and sister, you don't have to search for it. Um, it's already provided in the word of the Lord, glory to God. So that you can be a strong believer, a strong Christian, and you can win battles for the Lord. Regardless if the battles are severe, regardless of how long that they might last, you are going to win because God has provided everything that you need to live a life of victory, a life of honor and glory to the Lord. Years ago, there's a story about two steamboats, and they were leaving Memphis about the same time and so they were traveling down that long Mississippi River as well as the longest river in America to New Orleans and so they traveled side by side those two steamboats and sailors now began to make comment about the slow pace of the other boat. They were looking for something, just like sometimes, you know, when we were younger, we were looking to race people on the road. You know what I mean? You come side by side with them and you begin to rev up your engine and you're, and you're lifting your clutch and you're burning a little time and you're stopping. You know, drivers will understand that I'm looking for a fight. I'm looking for a race because I know I've got a powerful engine. I know, amen, I am an experienced driver and I am testing you, I'm challenging you here to go uh, with me on a race. And so that was happening here, the comments that were being made from the other boat. Words are being exchanged and challenges um, were being made and guess what happened? You know, race is off. Race is on between those two steamboats. Well, the competition was pretty fierce, my friend. And then one of the boats began to fall behind because they did not have enough fuel. They did not have enough coal. They kind of burned it up, uh, as you say, revving their engines to maximum. Getting the maximum power out of the engine, you got to give them all that fuel uh, that you got. Um, they had enough to begin with for the trip, normal trip, but with this race that they were in, my friend, um, they began to rob, you would say, as steam, amen, <laughs> hallelujah. And so the boat continued to drop back um, um, quite a bit, uh, but then there was one wicked soldier. He came up, uh, one wicked, uh, yes, sailor, he came up uh, with a, a solution. He said, you know what, um, we have run out of coals uh, on the boat, uh, but we got a lot of baggage. Let's put some baggage uh, in that engine and see what is going to happen. They have never done that before. But lo and behold, as they begin to toss baggages um, into that, 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 uh, that, that where the coal is, is burning, do you know that the baggage was burning as the coals? Wow! And as that was happening, the boat began to pick up speed, my friend. And because they badly wanted to win the race, you know what? They took all the baggage, all the baggage on that boat, my friend, and threw it inside that burner. Burn it all up, my friend, and that boat, nothing could stop that boat. Amen. Victory! Glory to God, it happened because what? Because they burned up all the baggage, my friend. Oh, let me tell you something. God says something about that in Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 1. 
I told you to memorize them verses, amen. What did the writer say? It says, lay aside them baggage. Burn up them baggages. Glory to God. Amen. The weight. Hallelujah. The unnecessary cargo that you and I are carrying through life that has no profit. In fact, what it does, it hinders us from progressing on and living a life to please God. There are so many baggages that you and I as Christians might have. You might have a different baggage to mine, but we all got to recognize our baggages. Things that have no profit in the life of eternity, they are weights. That the encumbrances uh, that the only hinder you and slow you up, uh, amen. And, and you will find that you might run the risk of being disqualified because you got some baggage uh, that you got to get rid of tonight, amen. And some of them are envy and jealousy and malice and pride and, and gossiping, my friend. Uh, the only baggage is that we got to get rid of them. Some of them are things of the love of the world. We take precedence over the things of God. Baggage is, amen. My friend, you got to burn them up tonight. Glory to God, amen. you got to throw them in that fire and burn them up. Glory to God. Because they will only be an hindrance and be a problem. They will mess you up. I left you all last time by saying this, that you've got to remember about your input or your intake, glory to God, because it will determine, your input will determine your output, your intake will determine your outtake, glory to God. Every runner knows that, every athlete knows that, every competitor knows that. It is important uh, what you put in uh, into your system. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, because uh, what you're putting could be detrimental um, or it can uh, achieve uh, the power that is necessary to win the race. Uh, and so our Bible tells us in the book of Revelations, could you kindly turn there as we continue on with the message that Jesus has uh, for the church at Pergamos. And so from chapter, verse, chapter 2, verses 12 through verses 16, the scripture says, To the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things say he which hath the sharp sword and the two edges. I know thy works, where thou dwellest, where Satan is the seed, thou holdest past my name, and hast not the name of faith, even in those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. I have a few things, however, against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Belak, who taught Belak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things as sacrifice to idols, and also to commit fornication. So, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, which thing I ate, 16, repent or else I will come quickly, I will come speedily, and I will fight against you, not for you, but I will fight against you uh, with the sword of my mouth. So Jesus is paying attention to this church, Pergamos, really good church, that up really, really great. But something was happening as they were running that race. They got indoctrinated, my friend. They got indoctrinated, yes. Sir. They got some teachings there. I tell you that was not going to be good. It looked good at the very beginning. It looked helpful, but it was really harmful. It appealed to the flesh, but not to the spirit. So they had an excellent start. That is why Jesus started with commendation. But he ended up with condemnation. Never let that happen, my friend. Never begin your Christian life with great uh, commendation by the Lord. And then coming to the end, uh, there is a condemnation. Remember, beginning well is fantastic, but finishing well is most uh, important, praise God. Two things that they were indoctrinated with. Uh, there was number one, the indoctrination of the teachings of Bilam. And secondly, the, the indoctrination of the Nicola Nicolaitans. Um, and so in uncertain, no uncertain terms, uh, Jesus said, church, stop it right now. I'm warning you, 
I've given you a severe warning. Remember, he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying unto the churches of. Jesus gave them a warning. He said, listen, otherwise you will end up knocking yourselves out of the race. So in verses 14, Bilalism, as it is called, was compromise in the realm of morals and in the realm of righteousness. For the people in this city to eat things that will sacrifice to idols meant that they were engaging in the feastings and in the orgies of the various idolatrous temples. As I stated before, these temples were given over to all kinds of lewdness and all kinds of sexual perversion, just like it is happening today, my friend. Laws are being passed now, and so there is a free expression of love. And for those who come against it, we accuse of, of discrimination. In certain cases, the Bible is uh, put down in certain places. The Bible wants to be knocked out because uh, the only book that speaks against it, it is the Holy Bible, glory to God. And it's become a fence for those who want to follow their evil ways and their evil desires. They will fight you down, my friend, um, as we are seeing today. We will be ostracized as the church of Jesus. Any church that stands for righteousness will not be popular, my friend. We at Common Science have said to you a million times, we are not seeking popularity. We are not seeking to be a popular church in Trinidad and Tobago, my friend, in this world. No, we rather be unpopular with the world, but be popular with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We will not compromise the Bible and the teachings of the Bible, my friend, to fill chairs and to fill offering baskets, my friend. We will not go that direction, glory to God. We will preach the truth, praise the name of the Lord, as long as God has given us the breath. We will teach the word of the Lord, and we will not compromise like the church in Pilgrimus. Can I hear you, amen, somebody? Glory to God. The Bible tells us that, that, that Balaam was the son of Beor, and he was living in Petor near the Euphrates River. And so he was highly regarded by the Moabites and the Midianites uh, as uh, an Obia man, as a soothsayer, a witch doctor, a medium, one that wrote this crystal ball. If have, have you tonight? Uh, Numbers chapter 24, you got to read that. Uh, verses 2 to verses 9. You will see that he was hired. Uh, he was a preacher that was all about the money, my friend. Come on, somebody. That was all he was about. He was all about bringing in that money. Wherever and whoever paid him more, you will find him there, my friend. He in mind, amen, about going against the word of the Lord and not preaching the truth as long as he could fill his pocket. That was the kind of preacher that he was, my friend. He was one of those popular preachers that we have today. That's all that we are thinking about, my friend. But woe, woe, woe to those preachers and pastors, my friend, that want to make merchandise. Hello, somebody. Rather than preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, hell will swallow them up. My, my goodness. The Bible warns about it in Matthew chapter 27, 21, 22, and 23. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, or preach Jesus Christ. Not everybody that casts out devils and work miracles, as I to tell you. Not because there are certain places that may have some so-called miracles that God is there. Don't be deceived, my friend. Remember even Pharaoh summoned his mother. Magicians, uh, and they also performed the miracles uh, that even Moses and Aaron was doing, my friend. Uh, but they were false prophets, like this uh, man, Balaam, here. And so the word of God surely exposes him as for who he really was. Uh, although, my friend, he was revered um, by the heathen nation as uh, a man of power, as a man that can do miracles, as a man that can bless people. 
people was a man that can curse people. They had that belief in this man that he possessed certain powers, certain spiritual powers, my friend. But it was not from God. It was from the devil. So be warned again tonight. Since Balaam found out he could not curse Israel to break the story short, my friend, he realized you'd be able to do something else. He was not able to curse them because God had blessed them. Amen. Amen. That's what I tell you, my friend. Some of you are so scared and some of you still, I tell you, bound by superstition. You still afraid you'll be a man. You still feel that like somebody could walk over on you. And some of you, I tell you, believe in nonsense. Some of you Christians are all too, I tell you, going by some soothsayer. And you will tell you that somebody walk over on you. Somebody walk that magic on you and your children. That's why they're so. And you believe in that stupidness. And you're still bound by the devil, my friend. And they know that these people are know that to break your money in, my friend. They know how to play that card. That card will be played a long time. Somebody throw something in your yard, bury something, and what that all okay. kind. And you believe in all them things. And you are child of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. And you still take it by that nonsense. Amen. Use the authority and the power that God has given unto you. In my name, Jesus said, Glory to God. Hallelujah. You will cast out them devils. Glory to God. Amen. Use the authority that you have. Glory to God, my friend. When God bless you, don't worry. No man can curse you. And we are blessed of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Your names are written in the last book of life. A true child of God is one that is blessed of the Lord. Amen. I don't need no holy water from St. Benedict for no further blessings. I'm already blessed of the Lord. Come on, somebody. I don't need no salt sprinkled upon me. I'm already blessed in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I don't need nobody to dance around me and shake some bells. I'm already blessed of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I miss me, somebody. I don't need that to reach. I am already blessed. I don't need no holy Shoe, I'm already blessed. Glory to God. Are you listening to me, somebody? Hallelujah. God, you know, Balaam is coming out. He was getting a tons and tons of money to curse Israel. But my friend, he learned a lesson even when the donkey had to talk to him. It's the first time we read about a donkey talking to a man. The donkey talked to Balaam. It's a funny story, my friend. Glory to God. Because in his arrogance and stupidity, my friend, um, uh, and that he was, was just going to do, um, amen, what he felt, um, you know, what was right, and God had to bring him, um, amen, to a proper place, and a donkey had to talk to him. That's when you're going bad, my friend. If you hear a donkey talking to you, my friend, you're really going bad. Come on, hello, someone. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. And some people are feel, uh, are feel my friend, that, that, that don't, don't pass that at all. Don't pass that at all. And so it was uh, that he, he understood uh, that he couldn't curse them, but he said, you know what? I could corrupt them. you got to watch out, my friend. I couldn't curse them, but I could corrupt them. Very subtle, very sly, my friend. Corruption is a very subtle thing. We have it in our country. My friend, everywhere you are till there is corruption, my friend. But it, it's, it's hidden. It's hit my friend, and, and sometimes to, 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 to get to, uh, to the bottom of it. Uh, oh, I tell you, you have to tell in a lot of stones, my friend. Uh, but corruption is deadly, my friend. Uh, and so guess what he did? Guess what he, he came up with, my friend? Uh, guess what this false lion prophet uh, came up with? Uh, he said to Balak, he said, I'll give you some advice. Uh, I can't curse Israel because they are blessed. But let me give you some advice on how you can get to Israel and destroy them. Because you see, he, this King Balak now, um, he was scared of Israel because Israel was prospering and they were taking over the land and he was scared. So that's why he hired this false prophet here, this media, this Obama, this psychic uh, here, my friend, uh, to curse Israel. And Balaam said, uh, I can't curse them, but we can corrupt them. So listen, he said, you know what you can do? What you can do is that you can intermarry with Israel. So get the beautiful woman that you got in Moab. Let them put on, uh, yes, their 
negligees and what not. And make sure that you know you can see through it and look at them. Get them pretty ones, uh, amen. Those Coca Cola ones, uh, yes. And uh, you know, everything is in right proportion and symmetry, yes. Uh, I tell you, let them go out the hair and thing. Uh, put on wig on if you have to, and eyelashes, and, and put the works, and put on false nail, everything you could do, and what not. Uh, teach them how to dance in a kind of sensual way, like a snake's dancing, so and so and so. And pass before the men of Israel, and you're surely going to captivate them boys and them heart. Uh, oh, you're going to have them head over heels, uh, and in that way, you're going to corrupt Israel. It didn't work, my friend. And surely, surely, that's what happened to Israel. Israel now aligned itself um, with the daughters of Moab. My friend, they defined their separation because they were a separated people, like you and I are separated, my friend. The Bible tells us the friendship of this world is enmity against God. I have to lose. Time is gone. Get rid of the facts. Get rid of them package. Amen. Otherwise, uh, you're going to become corrupted just like Israel was, that like disqualified her from the race. And she ended up being in bondage and slavery again. She wasn't slavery in Egypt. But because she turned from the Lord after experiencing such freedom and abundance in the land of Canaan, because she began to intermarry. With the heathen nation, my friend. Yes, the doctrine of Balaam. This is what Jesus said to the church in Pergamos. You got the doctrine of Balaam. What was it, my friend? It was one of corruption. Yes, sir. It was one of intermarrying. Yes, sir. And so when Israel now fell in love with Moab, the women of Moab, my friend, guess what happened? Then women of Moab, all they knew was idolatry. They were idol worshippers. So they got married to idol worshippers. And guess what now? Israel sat with the women they married, my friend. When they were having all their prayers and going to their temples, Israel was now in the temples. And they were eating the food that was offered to these idols, thus becoming one with the idols. That is why the Bible is clear. Do not eat foods that are sacrificed to idols, because you become one with the idol. I know that there are some deceitful teachings that are going about. Pray over it and bless it, and then eat. Everything going to be all right. It is sanctified by the word of prayer. I know that. I'm not coming from high authority, my friend, but not from the highest authority, from the Bible. Who you want to listen to? Man, false teachers? So you will listen to the word of the Lord, my friend. We got to pick up this, amen, somebody? And I got to teach you a little bit about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, amen, as well. Very subtle. Father, we thank you for your word and the teachings of God that we have received to cause us, dear Lord Jesus, amen, to be free from contamination and pollution that is out there in the world. That has entered into many churches today. Many churches have embraced the corruption and the doctrine of the Lamb, their Lord Jesus. Yes. And so they are, are becoming one with the world. Rather than be, being separated from the world. As commanded by the word of God. Be separate. Come out from among them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But Father, we find that there's such a mixture of the church and the world today that you can't tell the church anymore from the world. Because the church is looking just like the world. The worship style is just like the world. The teaching is just like the world. People could come and sit down with their fornication and adultery and lesbianism and homosexuality and all kinds of sin. And they can be quite comfortable because there is no teaching against sin in the church anymore because people and leaders of the church are afraid to lose members and to have empty chairs and empty baskets dear father we have become an all-inclusive dear father but lord still there's only one way to get to heaven that is 
through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. That will not change and never change. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. If you are blessed, give the Lord a good hand tonight. I could we just pray uh, for uh, Adriel? He has been sick since Monday. And uh, let's also give thanks to Ryan. Uh, he is uh, out from the hospital and he is home. Uh, uh, so feel free and, uh, and call him and, uh, and so on. All right, but we thank the Lord uh, for bringing him out. Father, uh, we just pray for the lead trail. He's been sick the Lord since Monday, but we pray right now that in this prayer meeting, Lord, that you would send for healing his way and his direction, and that he'd be old and well right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for Ryan, Lord, for bringing him out of the hospital, but Lord, he needs that strength every single day, and we trust you for him, dear Lord, one day at a time, dear Father God. For those others, others who may not be well, I pray for healing, going on in their direction, those who might be on the line but tonight, dear Lord, that uh, have a need, dear Father, I pray, Lord, that you will meet them at the point of their need. They don't need to go to no old man, no, no see a man, no, no, no witch doctor, no, no medium, no false prophet, dear Lord, but they can look to Jesus Christ, amen, right now, amen. Just like Israel, when she was bitten by that serpent, she looked at that cross, amen, hallelujah, that pole, glory to God, amen, as many as looked at on that pole, glory to God, amen, and looked in faith, was healed, praise God, thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we want to uh, bid all the online viewers a uh, good night, and we will uh, see you, God willing, uh, Sunday morning. 9 a.m. and something at 6 to the p.m. for our next uh, live services. Remind you again tomorrow, all the young men, the men, I invite you for our men's fellowship 7 o'clock. Blessings on you. Good night to those of you online.